all of these gifts are so that marriages can be saved, so that yes. you can avoid wrecks on the road. That's right. And this is a fragment of the knowledge of God, but He knows everything and He knows how to tell us at that moment. But the word of wisdom, that's why you see so many people running after these quote unquote prophetic gifts because they want to know the, the future. future. When you have an intimate, ongoing relationship with the Holy Spirit, even in the time where you are distracted, instinct will kick in by His Spirit and you will move out of the way. the higher life my name is Jenny and in this series we are going to discover the gifts of the Holy Spirit I'm so excited about this because I have found that when we are led by the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives it paves a way for us to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit more frequently not only is this amazing for us but there is such a joy that is found when we understand what it is to have a working active relationship even a partnership with the Holy Spirit through operating in these gifts now to help us dig into the Word of God and understand and how we can practically enjoy this intimate partnership with the Holy Spirit, I have two guests joining us. Let's welcome Dr. Debbie Rich Wester and Dr. Pat Bailey. Now in this program, we are going to be discussing the first of two parts of the gift of a word of wisdom. So let's go straight into the Word of God and find out what it has to say about this amazing gift of the Spirit. So as we get into the Word of God concerning the marvelous gifts that He's given us, we get so excited because there's always more. It's as though every time we get into the treasure of His Word, there's always going to be a progression. The, we, I don't believe we will ever get to the place where we've learned everything we need to learn about the Holy Spirit and His gifts. And as you know, this program is dealing specifically with the gift of the Word of Wisdom. And I felt, ladies, what we're going to do is I'm going to just throw out, to start with, the definition of this gift according to what the Word of God says. And then we are going to flow into everything the Word has concerning this gift and show you how we can practically work in that. I'm so excited about this because I have to tell you of these gifts, the series that we're going to be doing now, or this session on these, uh, remember we spoke about how the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts are set into three specific categories. And we've already dealt with the first part or the first category being the utterance gifts um, or the vocal gifts. And that was uh, the gift of diverse tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues. And then we spoke about the prophecy. prophecy. Of course, how could we ever miss out on that one? The gift of prophecy. Those are the vocal gifts. Now we're going into the revelation gifts. And that's really what they're called, revelation gifts, because they are revealed to us. This is not something that we would know on our own. In fact, it has nothing to do with our natural understanding. A revelation gift is information that the Holy Spirit gives us that we could not have naturally known on our own. And when we speak about a word of wisdom, it's very important that we understand what it actually means. It is when God gives us a specific word concerning something in the future something that is going to happen that we could never have known about naturally. And we have so many examples that we're going to go into in the Word of God concerning this gift. But what I have to say is what it is not. <laughs> the Word of Wisdom is not someone who is generally wise. So often people refer to Solomon as being someone who always operated under the word of wisdom, but he did not. The, oh, he was wise in many things, but there are many things he was not wise in. Right? I mean, who in their right mind would want um, so many wives? I mean, goodness me, there's no, no wisdom in that, but nonetheless, 
One is more than enough for any person. But as we get into this, we'll understand that when it comes to a word of wisdom, it is a fragment of information. It doesn't mean you are a wise person. It is a fragment of information that the Holy Spirit has downloaded into your spirit for a specific time in the future. I find this to be such an awesome gift. It has saved my life many times. Mm. It, not only do we see many examples of it in the Word of God. I mean, Joseph was given a dream mm -hmm. and he knew the will of God for his life. In fact, later as he uh, interpreted the other dreams, he was able to give a word of wisdom mm -hmm. to Pharaoh what? about how the entire land of Egypt and then consequently Israel would be protected and fed in a time of famine. That's we right. see it all through the Old and the New Testament. And I'm sure we will refer to many of these examples, but I would love to throw out just a couple of my, my own life that um, there was a time several years ago that our church, I grew up in Nebraska, right in the center of the country. And our church was going to Omaha, 90 miles away, to hear an evangelist many years ago before I was in full-time ministry. And I was just a very young adult. We got back at two o'clock in the morning off of a bus. We all had to go to our separate homes and towns and I'm headed down the highway with a lady in my car and her daughter. And all of a sudden I saw a truck pass over his lane, pass over the inner lane, over the median and into my lane. And I jerked the car over as quickly as I could, got over into the grass and turned the key off and just sat there. He, he missed us by an inch. Sure. But as soon as I pulled over, all of a sudden we see a truck pass his lane, pass over the median, come into our lane, and the lady in the back of the car and her daughter just screamed. And they said, when they calmed down, they said, we have one question. Why did you pull over before that happened? And I said, because I saw it all happen and thought wow. I was in it a moment ago. And it was that real. I have had those so many times in my life. And, and then I've had them on occasion for other people and they have actually saved lives. There are people in the underground church of China right now that if they did not operate in these gifts, Absolutely. the Holy Spirit waking them up, showing them things to come, escape, go here, go over here. He is that detailed. He can wow. give you addresses. He can give you times. This, this will be more and more needed in our day and age as persecution mounts in many places. And the body of Christ must function by these gifts of the Spirit. Absolutely. And it's available to all of us. That's what I want to really bring out, Pat. Let's speak about that as well, about how it's available to every believer. Um, the wonderful thing about our Father is that He has given, keyword given us, all things that pertain to life and godliness. And God is no respecter of persons. And if He's done it for one, He will do it for another. The Bible says that He distributes severally as He will. But there's certain things that every believer, let's, let's define this, every believer has a right to be led by the Spirit. They that are led by the Spirit are called the sons of God. Now the giftings are the ones that He gives severally, but an everyday unction of being led by the Holy Spirit, every believer has a right to that. The Word of God says this. Now one of the things that the challenge is, is the Bible says that a carnal-minded man cannot discern or operate in the things of the spirit. That means you're feeding on the flesh all the time. You're on social media all the time. A lot of things maybe on television that don't so feed good. the spirit. So whatever you feed dominates your life. If you're very weak in developing and feeding the things of the spirit, the Bible says whatsoever's flesh has to be all maybe maintained and up kept in the flesh. Whatever's in the spirit must be fed and maintained by the spirit. When we deal with the word of wisdom, let's be very clear that the word of wisdom reveals the, write these down ladies, and those of you that are viewing, because this is a class, right, Denny? Yes. We want you to learn. It always reveals the plan. Everyone say plan. Plan. The purpose, everyone say purpose. The purpose. And the mind of God, everyone say the mind of the God. Mind of so God. what God does is give us a perimeter or guidelines or boundaries so that you're trying to discover and discern 
is this of God? Remember yesterday, some of the questions were, yes. uh, how do we know if this is God? So God is smarter than us. He went ahead of us. So he says, these are the boundaries or indicators so that you'll know when you see this and you detect this, you know what this is and you know what this is. Like those that come from the medicinal background, when they're, uh, uh, when they're analyzing or operating or determining what type of uh, diseases or what type of indicators and what type of things they see, there's certain things that they go by. Like if it's, if it's infection, then it's this. And if it's a fever with infection, you understand what I'm saying? Correct. To keep you within boundaries. Well, the Father is the same way with you with that concerning you with the gifts. In the word of wisdom, it's going to always reveal the plan, the purpose, and the mind of God. And as Pastor Jenny already said, it will always refer to futuristic things, things of the future. And so these are some of the things we can deal with. The example that was given by Debbie is incredible because in our life, we need that so much because there's so many things that pertain to the future that we would not know. I love what Pastor Jenny said as well. Sometimes you can know what something is by de determining what it is not. You came out of the gate saying, let's say it is not just a person that has wisdom like Correct. Solomon. This is a what God reveals fragmented parts of his will, fragmented parts of his mind. He will never tell one person everything that there is to know. No one will, the Bible says we all see in part and we all know in part. But let me land the plane right here. What it is not. What it is not, everybody say, is not. Is not. A little bit louder, is not. Is not. What it is not. Remember, we talked about indicators. The Holy Spirit keeps us safe so we can know what it's not. And you see this a lot today. What it is not is a person that operates like a fortune teller. Right. Mm -hmm. When they start operating like a fortune teller, here's an indicator, like if there is infection, then there's probably gonna be fever. And if there is, are you all with me? Yes. Here's some indicators. Everybody say indicators. Indicators. When you see a person, and we'll, we'll spend more time with this when we get to the discerning of spirits, but right. I wanna address this because it's popular. When you see money attached to fortune telling or foretelling things of the future, indicator again, run farce run. Because when you see in the book of Acts, when the woman had a spirit of divination and Paul turned and spoke to the spirit, not the, not the maiden, but the spirit, remember they got upset when he cast that spirit out of her because she gave her masters much That's gain. Right. Right. They were making money off of her. So we see attached again, when money is attached to the gift, especially when it pertains to fortune telling of futuristic things. It's now let's good. pause there. In the futuristic things of God revealing, Pastor Jenny said the key word revealing, the gifts always reveal something. When you go to a meeting and somebody tells you your address, that's not revealing anything. <laughs> How do we fall for this dumb stuff? You already knew your address. Absolutely. Somebody say indicator. Indicator. And then they tell you your, 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 how much you have in your bank account or your bank account number. They didn't reveal that. As a matter of fact, if there's a thief in the group, you just reveal to them what I have in my bank. <laughs> Somebody say indicator. Indicator. So you see that when it reveals the things of the spirit, key word Pastor Jenny said, reveal. So if, if, if somebody's sitting there, they're operating in one of these gifts, and a lot of times these gifts definitely rest in those who carry the office of a prophet or those who say that they're prophets, and they say they're revealing things to you, or we know the Bible says it's supposed to reveal, and they told you something you already know, well, then already you know it's operating in the spirit. That doesn't line up with the indicators. Right. The other thing when you see, as the example we saw yesterday, when it's attached to money, we, the Bible has already given us a clear example in the Word of God where this woman was actually operating in this spirit and, and it was attached to money. The other thing that you can see uh, that there's a major, major, major indicator, we see the example of the witch of Endure with, uh, with Saul. Again, Familiar spirits can gather information and foretell the future or, or, or express the future, but that doesn't mean that is the word of wisdom. When a person is operating in the prophetic gift, the word of wisdom is one of the strongest gifts. As a matter of fact, Dead Hagen always said, he, this is his expression, he says, out of the gifts of the revelatory gifts, he says that the most valuable, the one that is needed the most in the body for believers, the ones that God knew right. that we would need the most would be the word of right. wisdom. Right. So in desiring the gifts, what the Bible says we have a right to do that, he, he, he lines the word of wisdom up there as one of the primary gifts that we want to desire the most or, or, or that God would give several benefits the body the most. Then the word of knowledge because it pertains to the now 
and then either the now or the past. But the word of wisdom, that's why you see so many people running after these quote unquote prophetic gifts because they want to know the, the future. future. That's right. And that's what draws people to that. But the one little thing that I want you ladies to know, and those of you are viewing, you're not gonna fall for the dumb stuff. You're not gonna be the test dummy. You know that you now have been taught through a higher life these are some indicators that I look for. And if it doesn't line up with that, an alarm goes I off. I love that. That was awesome. Thank you, Pat. Debbie, we spoke about how it's so important in our everyday lives to be in tune with the Holy Spirit so we can operate even in this word of wisdom. Yes. Um, there have been times that I have given somebody a word of wisdom for them that has, has just changed the entire course of their life. And God wants to edify, he wants to build up, but sometimes there is a course correction Correct. that is in that as well. Very because good. we aren't just talking about the gift of, of prophecy now to edification, exhortation, and comfort. When we're bringing forth revelation from the heart of God, sometimes people refuse to repent on their own. And God takes desperate measures to get things across. That's very I, good. I know on one occasion, um, I was standing in front of a man in my revival meeting and it came to me, just tell this man he's in sin and he needs to repent. And I thought, oh Lord, I have never given forth a word like that. Don't you mean I'm supposed to encourage him, tell him he's gonna be used greatly, something that you love to deliver to people. <laughs> and it kept coming, kept coming. What complicated the matter was that he was housing part of our ministry team, he and his wife. They had been sure. cooking for them, allowing them to stay in their house. And they told me they had been blessed and they were so hospitable. I'm like, Lord, this is not the way to thank somebody. I am having an internal argument with the Lord <laughs> while I'm trying to give an altar call, which is very difficult to do. And, <laughs> and, uh, and finally, Finally, I just said, I don't even know what the next word is going to be, what, what he's in sin in. If you could give me a hint, adultery, wife beating, homosexuality, something. And, and it just address this and I will give you the rest. I must say in this one occasion, I've obeyed ever since. And I've only had something similar like that happen maybe three or four times. But in that occasion, I did not obey. Now listen what happened. Instantly, the anointing was gone in that meeting. Aww. I couldn't even give an altar call. I just felt like I had no breath in me. And the lady who was my assistant, who's very outspoken, she just hollered, what's wrong? Aren't you obeying God on something? And I thought, thank you. Let's make it obvious. Wow. The, next, the, next day, the next day, the man's wife came to my assistant and said, what do you do when your husband's in sin? Oh. You've confronted him, he denies it. The pastor's confronted him and he denies it. And our marriage is falling apart. God has to do something. And when she brought that information to me, I went, Lord, I am so sorry. I wow. repent before you and I will not miss my next opportunity. And wow. I did not. But I have found even um, perhaps when we get in the word of knowledge, I was just sharing about God even showing me where keys were, but that was, it, was a, it wasn't for the future. It was something that happened now. So we'll share right. it then. But all of these gifts, are so that marriages can be saved, so that yes. you can avoid wrecks on the road. That's right. And this is a fragment of the knowledge of God, but he knows everything and he knows how to tell us at that moment. It can come by vision form, as we see with Daniel. It can come by dream form, as we've seen with Joseph. It can come through a prophetic utterance. So the prophecy part is the vehicle that the revelation is carried on. Love that. But, but it is separate from the simple gift of prophecy because it's revealing something. So when something is revealed, especially for the future, it's word of wisdom. It's not just simple prophecy. That's very good. So it can come, it can come um, uh, the Lord just waking you up and talking to you. It can come through an audible voice. Absolutely. So it can come through many different forms. Don't just look to it to come through another individual. It may or may not. He may show you directly. Another example, and we're going to be using so many examples because once you have a definition, it's so easy then to understand as we give examples in the Bible times as well as in, our, in personal lives and personal testimonies, it's so easy then to be able to understand and practically have confidence to actually operate in this ourselves. So one I, I'm just thinking of, because again, our time is going, but um, I'm thinking of Noah. Noah yes. was, was a brilliant example. Yes. 
God told Noah that there was going to be so much rain, he had to build an ark. And Noah didn't even know what rain was because there was no such thing as rain. It's amazing how in his time, God gave him a specific instruction and he told him, Noah, you are going to build an ark. And then he even told him how to build that ark. Now, do you understand that what God was doing, he was giving him a, a, a window into what was going to come. I'm going to destroy the earth with water. This is what's going to happen. But this is the way out for you. Amazing. Isn't that God? Yes. It's not like, um, the, you know, the, it's the end of the world as you know it. Uh, but I have a plan for you. And this is what you're going to do. So along with that word of wisdom, very often that word of wisdom is there to warn you of something that will happen in the future and give you completely clear instructions on what to do in order to be protected, which is absolutely beautiful. Just like your, your story in the beginning, Debbie, about swerving off the road. I know that we have had, even in our travels, the same type of thing happen where my husband would be driving and just out of the blue, it's so funny, out of the blue, but God would, it was, he didn't even realize it was God at the time until we saw what happened afterwards. But he just knew he had this, this instinct to have to get off the side, just get right off the road. And, and the minute that after he had done that, a car came from the opposite direction towards us right into our lane and we would have been killed. So it would have been a head on collision. And even then we were sat there shaking and so grateful. And I want you to understand this child of God, because so often you think, oh, maybe I'm not going to be able to hear in time. Maybe I can't hear what God is saying. What if I miss out on this? And, and my own uh, lack of hearing God is going to get me into danger. I want you to know, just as we have been telling, when you have an intimate, ongoing relationship with the Holy yes. Spirit, even in the time where you are distracted, instinct will kick in by his spirit and you will move out of the way what our responsibility is to make sure that every single day we are abiding in Jesus Christ we are in his word we are communicating with him do you know why because as we get to the place where hearing the voice of God becomes the most natural thing to us in everyday life you will find those times when he needs to download that information right away. You will recognize his voice. Yes. Doesn't the word say that? Yes. Jesus said, my sheep know me and they recognize my voice. And so now that we've come to the end of this first part of the word, the gift of the word of wisdom, I know that you are intrigued <laughs> and you want to learn more and know how you can operate in this marvelous gift. But it all comes down to understanding how to hear the voice of God for yourself. Now we're going to be right back. Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, That's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store. had such an amazing discussion here in the studio and I know that you at home there are so many questions that are rising up concerning this gift of a word of wisdom and we can't wait to answer your questions so you can email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com with any questions you have concerning this gift of the word of wisdom and we will get right back to you but right now in our studio audience we have some amazing questions that I know you possibly may even be asking yourself my question is uh, what if you receive a revelation of something negative or harm coming to someone how do you know whether to share with this person or just stand in the gap for them well the same God that gave you the revelation will be the same God who answers that for you when you just go to him in prayer and say Lord is this something I'm just supposed to pray about intercede about do you want me to actually take it to the person and you wait on him for the answer, he will give that answer. And sometimes I believe there's a time that we pray about it, we intercede, and if 
if the deliverance or they don't turn or whatever does not take place, that God says, okay, now I'm going to take it a step further and I want you to go to them with this, with this revealing word. And so each situation is different. You just have to trust that same Holy Spirit. That's the, why that relationship is so important. Wow, Debbie, thank you. That is really spot on. Again, remember, and I loved what you said there, the same Holy Spirit that gave you that warning, that gave you that unction is the same Holy Spirit that will tell you what to do about it. We spoke about it even with Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah, this is happening, so do this. Mm -hmm. So he will always give you, just go before him and ask him. Now, I know that we have time for one more question. Remember those of you at home who want to know anything more concerning this gift of the word of wisdom, we will get into the word and do our best to help you and find answers and encourage you in this. Higher Life at MyFaithTV.com is where you are going to email to ask these questions. But right now, let's go back to our studio audience. There's time for one more question. If the gift of prophecy is supposed to bring comfort and the word of wisdom can at times be uncomfortable, how do I accept both gifts because they're given by the same spirit, even though one is comfortable and the other is uncomfortable? Well, the discomfort is because you, you have a hard time sometimes bringing someone a word that won't make them just go, oh, I'm so happy about that. But it's not discomfort in the same way that the other one is that we talked about. God will never tear someone down. If, if you had a word that said, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're not doing anything right, you know that's not from God. That's always from the enemy. But even though it's uncomfortable to deliver that God says you're in sin or that correction needs to be made, there is a comfort with that of knowing that God loves that person. He wants to rescue them. He's doing everything he knows to do to bring them out of the pit so that they can spend eternity with him. And so it's only uncomfortable to the flesh. It's not uncomfortable to the spirit to deliver a word that. like that. Oh, I love that answer. That was so good. And you know what, Debbie, it made me think even of David. When David was in sin, the Bible says that he actually felt like his bones were wearing down on him. And the minute he was confronted, he could be free of that thing. And really, that is the heart of God, to free you of that thing. So, so see it as that, not as, uh, well, I couldn't, I'm not going to repeat what you said because that was brilliantly put. Now, remember those of you at home, we want to hear your questions too and encourage you concerning this gift of the word of wisdom. So email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com. Well, that brings us to the close of this program and this part of the gift of the word of wisdom. It has been so amazing to see the light bulbs go on across the entire studio audience. I would like for you to help me thank my panel for the blessing that they have been to us. And you, my studio audience, Now make sure you do not miss our next program. We are going to go into the second part of the gift of Word of Wisdom and find out exactly what God's Word says concerning us operating in that gift. So until next time, God bless you and goodbye. Many times God will give somebody facts about the present and then say this is what needs to change for the future. As long as we have a relationship with Him, He will lead us, He will guide Beautiful. us. The end result is that they not only get saved, but they get filled with the Holy Spirit yes. and revival breaks out and it all begins to operate from this precious gift, the Word of Wisdom. If you only operate in this Word of Wisdom in full-time ministry, then we've missed it altogether. together.